Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. We are a webinar, a webcast, an online show, um, whatever you want to call us. We're here live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, the sessions are recorded um, and posted onto our website after the show, and both the show and our recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So share with your friends and colleagues anything that we are doing upcoming and our recorded shows. And we do a mixture of things here, presentations, book reviews, mini training sessions. Um, basically, if anything is library related, we are looking to have it on the show. Um, and we sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations, but we also do bring on guest speakers sometime. And that's what we have this morning. Um, on the line with us from just north of um, us, we're here in Lincoln, they're up in the Omaha area, is Amy Wenzel from the Omaha Public Library. Hi, Amy. Say hello. Hi. Hi. And Wanda Butts, who's from our Sump Memorial Library in Papillion. Um, Amy is... Um, Used to work at uh, Sump Memorial, correct? That's correct. Right, and then has moved on to Omaha. But they did this presentation, uh, this presentation about some programming that they did for um, adults with special needs. Um, and I'll say also, Amy, I'll just warn you, she is um, having some voice issues this morning. She's a little sick, so she may be a little quiet sounding. Um, if she's having some problems, um, Wanda may speak up for her on her behalf to make sure that we can um, get through this with um, the least amount of trauma to Amy and her voice. So I'm just going to hand over to you guys to take it away and uh, share your presentation with us. Well, good morning from not so sunny Omaha, Nebraska. Um, my name is Wanda Betts, and I'm here with Amy Wenzel. Um, and we're going to give you a, kind of our insight on a program that we did for adults with special needs. And we named it Fun with Friends. We didn't come up with anything clever. Um, we couldn't seem to find anything. We didn't want to call it a story time. So we just, we just called it something simple, Fun with Friends. And it ended up being pretty much that kind of a program. Amy is kind of um, without a voice this morning, so I will do most of the talking and she will interject. So I hope you don't have problems hearing her, as I can't really hear her too well anyway. So I want to, I kind of want to give you a little background about this program and maybe a little background about both Amy and myself. Um, we, we kind of um, thought about this program. Amy became really involved with it, with it as she was the Community Engagement Assistant Director at the Sutton Memorial Library at that time. We just saw a lot of um, special needs adults coming into a, our library to use our computers and also with groups that would just come in and sit and, and look at books. Uh, as we watched these uh, special adults, we kind of started thinking about the fact that we would like to have a program that involved them more within the library that had kind of a literacy um, component with it. And we approached some of the caregivers that were coming in and to see how they would feel about this program. So Amy set out to write a grant for the program, which, which actually we received. And so now we had the money and we had some people that were interested. And here were two people I knew nothing about special needs and what kind of program to, to put on. So um, we at first thought about the fact that we wanted to make it sort of like a story time. Um, but many of these adults showed interest in some of, some of our regular ch story time programming. But the story times for children didn't really fit the needs of the adults. First of all, all these programs, they weren't designed with the needs of the adults. There was not the physical space in, in the children's programming for it to accommodate them. And the programs were also not designed to meet their needs intellectually. So these adults, they had adult experiences and sometimes a great deal of knowledge about the topic being discussed. Those programs were, 
were designed for children at a different point in their lives intellectually. So we had to come up with a brand new program. So we decided we wanted to institute some programming for adults, but not having any experience with that population, we weren't sure where to start. So basically, um, Amy started researching those programs around the country, both our libraries and other organizations that dealt with special needs. And, and we kind of found a few programs that we wanted to use their format. Um, Amy contacted Sarah Ringer at Durham County Libraries, and that's in North Carolina, and you can Google that actually and find information about it. And she had a fantastic story time, and she had a craft program that always went with her. With it. Um, so Amy contacted her, and she gave us all of her resources, uh, pages of information, um, and even months and months of her programming ideas. And with that, Amy and I kind of set out to establish some kind of a, of a program. Well, unbeknownst to us, um, there were a lot of other resource, resources out there. The Ollie Webb um, had a book club, and so we talked with them. But they really, they really had. We didn't want to go into a book club type program because Ollie Webb already had that established, and that book club is called the Next Chapter Book Club. And I only give you that information because Ollie Webb is on on the web. You can Google them also, and you can also Google the next chapter of Book Club, which will give you a lot of information. Uh, we didn't really want to compete with them. We wanted to offer something additional. We also considered a 10-week series of educational art programs with uh, an organization in Omaha called Y Arts. Um, th this organization worked to bring art education to people of all ages, uh, socioeconomic status, and ability levels. And they have done quite a bit of work with special needs adults with this program. So we applied for an additional grant to be able to offer that program also, but we did not get that grant. And it was kind of a little pricey because it includes a lot of materials. Um, it, it includes somebody, a professional artist, that comes in and actually deals with that program. So Amy originally planned to use that story time format, you know, that, that one that you usually use with children with a literacy form, with a literacy uh, component, a craft, and maybe some kind of a movement. Um, but, but we went to um, a local organization in Papillion, Nebraska, and we talked to them about, about our program. And when we presented it, we presented it in that story time format. Um, this was a local organization that provided the day and residential uh, programs to adults with special needs. And we were told that although their adults may enjoy that program, the caregivers or guardians of those adults with special needs may not be quite as supportive. So they would probably think the program that we were bringing forth was a little too childish. So of course then Amy went back to the drawing board and started looking at other options. And since we knew this organization was willing to work with us and bring like 10 to 12 adults to, to our program, they were very helpful in helping us design a program we knew we could get approved through their organization. So that's kind of how we came up with, with Fun With Friends. Um, again, I can't tell you that enough about the fact that we knew nothing about how to do this. So we're flying by the seat of our pants. So one of the things I, I think is really very important is that you communicate with the people that are in the know. Um, talk to um, as many people, uh, parents, caregivers, organizations that deal with special needs. And they're always very willing to give you all, all of their information they possibly can. <clears throat> so we set out 
we have our program already. We decided it was going to be a one hour monthly educational and social program based on the fact that we would love to maybe have done it every week, but we were, st we were doing this under the grant format. So we had limited funds at that time. Um, our content would vary greatly depending on the month. So we would kind of have a theme each month that we, we, um, we presented. So our basic format included an icebreaker. And the icebreaker usually um, what we would do is we get into a big circle and we toss a ball back and forth. And when they caught the ball, they would say their name. Um, you can't say your name over and over again. There's nothing better in the whole world than, be than to be called by name. And so um, the, the uh, participants, we had name tags for them. We learned their names. We learned a little bit about them so that we could always be calling them by name. And they loved that. They learned our names greatly, quickly, and they were just, they were thrilled to be able to talk to us. So then we would always learn a new topic. So we had our topic that we would present. And then after our topic, we would um, usually do some kind of project or craft, a hands-on. And then at the end, um, time allowing, we would always have a mini dance party. Something that was fun. Um, that maybe sometimes if we had too much time, they would, of course, anybody, no matter who you are, if you're small, if you have special needs, if you're just an adult, you're always willing to dance. Dancing was always, you know, something that, that we all love to do. Um, now I'm going to kind of tell you about some of the programs that we did, and I can be not always, always successful. Um, you know, you always want your program to be wonderful, but they're not always successful. Um, some of the programs that worked, our theme, our very first theme, as you can see by the picture, was Mardi Gras. And, and that's kind of when we started our program, like in February, March. And so um, we had a we presented a literacy part of it by talking about Mardi Gras. We showed a very short little um, video clip. And then um, we did a craft. And the craft, as you can see, was making masks. We had, we had feathers. We had jewels. We had glue. We had a great time. And it was really fun. And everybody was really excited about taking their craft home with them. Um, with that, and at that time, our dance was the Cupid Shuffle, which was a fun dance. Um, if you don't know anything about that, please Google that also, because that's something you should have, all have on your iPods. Um, dancing with little kids, big kids, it doesn't make any difference. It was just a lot of fun. Um, the next problem we did was called Butterflies, and we played Butterfly Bingo. And then we ha would have different types of butterflies that we would show. And then they would have a bingo card. And um, that was a really interesting, interesting uh, program, more or less, because it was the first time we really did something that was, mm, it was, it was a learning, ex learning um, there was a literacy component to it, but not a book. We just played a game and we showed and talked about different types of butterflies. I don't, I don't know. It was kind of fun for a while, but but it, it wasn't something we wanted to have to last too long because they lost interest really quickly. So afterwards, um, Amy and I had a blown up a big butterfly on a sheet, and we had done like four or five of them, and we we taped them to tables the outline, just the outline to tables. And um, then we had paints and paint brushes provided and they were we, we we divided the group into four and then they were able to paint their own butterfly. It was butterflies if 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 you don't know butterflies um papillion is known as the home of the monarch butterfly. So it was kind of theme based for our area also. 
and they were they were able to paint however they wanted. They could do whatever kind of design they wanted to do on the butterfly. So it was totally kind of up to them. Um, if they didn't stay within the outline, it was fine too. They did whatever they wanted. They were able to take the butterflies back to their organization, or if there were some individuals there, they took them home. And of course, we kept one of them to, to display at our library. So that was also one that was very successful. Um, during the summer, during summer reading, usually you have quite a few presenters that come to your library that present for summer reading. And we had some very good resources um, for, for uh, presenters that we were going to use for our Fun with Friends program. These presenters we knew had um, understood this audience and, and were able to come in to, um, to work with our special needs adults and present programs that would be a hands-on program that didn't have a lot of talk to it. Um, usually, um, usually it was something that, that they would be very interested in. One of the presenters was from the Papio National Resource District, which is, a, which is an um, organization that does some rescue of reptiles, owls, and does educational programs throughout the state of Nebraska. Um, we had a wonderful presenter. His name was Austin, and he just he really understood the audience. He had patience. He um, brought humor to the group, and he also brought snakes and reptiles. And, and there were, there were um, participants in that audience that actually knew as much as Austin did about some of these reptiles. They were able to hold the snakes. They were able to handle things. Um, it was just, it was incredibly fun, and it was also incredibly funny <laughs> because some of the things that, that that were said within the group just were hysterical. Yeah, um, Wanda, I, I was going to ask that that picture. I thought that picture on your very first slide looked like she had a snake around her neck. I was wondering about that. <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> That would have been yeah. right. that, that is exactly right. He <laughs> how active that program was. Wow. Um, and believe me, um, Amy and I were standing back in the corner, more afraid of these snakes than mm -hmm. any of our producers. <laughs> and this is one of the small because he had a very large snake mm -hmm. that they just kind of they held clear across their lap. Wow. So, yeah. Very brave of them. <laughs> Braver than me, yeah. <laughs> um, some of our other programs that worked really well, we brought in therapy dogs. And of course, anything that has to do with dogs and being able to touch dogs is always a wonderful program, no matter how old you are. Um, before the dogs came in, though, we did a small craft, and that craft was where we made, actually made doggy treats. Um, many of our adults had pets at home, so they were able to take the treats home, and many of them just donated them to um, the, the dogs that came as, as the therapy dogs. And this was really good because um, I can't remember the lady's name, but the woman that had the therapy dogs gave a lot of, um, showed them how she trained them, showed, showed the participants the things that the therapy dogs could do. Um, they were very, um, they were very involved in, in the therapy dogs. They were able to, to touch them. They were able to, um, to pet them. Um, so that was a really successful program also. Um, what we did, we did a contract with White Arts for one program. So Lisa from White Arts came out and she did a watercolor program. And this again um, was a, a situation where they were able, she gave instruction, they listened, they followed. Um, it was a hands-on program. They, nobody needed to um, they, you know, design anything special. Um, 
it was just learning about watercolors and the different things that you could do with it and the different techniques. Very fun, very fun. What, but, of course, you always have those programs that don't work. And we were thinking these would be, this would be the most wonderful program ever. And it was, and we called it Let's Explore Science. Well, science has all kinds of different components, and so we were really thinking that this would be so successful. Well, the problem with this, this program was basically um, we, we had it set up in, with two different kind of science projects. One of them was that we put baking soda and vinegar into a um, like a bottle and put a balloon on top and then the balloon was supposed to supposed to uh, blow up and we could see the chemical reaction going on. Well, it worked pretty well, but it involved a lot of pouring ingredients into a bottle, getting the balloon over the top. Um, there was a lot of different different things that went on during that period, but once you had it done, and you put the balloon on top and it blew up, and the balloon blew up, um, then basically that, that science experience, experiment was over. So it went very quickly, and we saw that this was, a, this was a situation that was over in five minutes. So of course we did it again, and it went very quickly, five minutes. So we tried to we talked about the the experience and we talked about the chemical reaction, but the fact is we did way too much talking. There was not enough crap. There was not enough exper experiment in it. So we weren't prepared really for that. Plus, then we decided part of the of the science project was that we would go outside and that transition period for um, special needs situation is sometimes kind of it takes a long time to go from one one place to another. So transitionally we got outside, it happened to be a very hot day and we were going to put Mentos into a soda like a big huge liter of coke and watch it explode. Got out there, that's what we did, it exploded, it was over, we were done, and we had probably only used up maybe 20 minutes of our time. So that one didn't work too good. Because it went too much, it went really too fast for us, and there was too much transition, and of course we, we lost, we lost a lot of, of the momentum, moment, well, we just didn't, we didn't do it well. So anyway, there was another program that didn't go too well, which we thought would be immensely fun, and it was, it was on penguins. Um, there was one small component of that program that went really well, and that was we got into a um, relay race, and we waddled. And that was fun. It made us, it made us laugh. We held our knees together and waddled like a penguin. Um, but after that, Amy and, Amy and I did a lot of talking, and uh, we had gotten a, a, a truck from Henry Doherty Zoo with all kinds of penguin paraphernalia in it. It had an egg, and it had feathers, and it had pictures of different penguins, and it, it was not enough hands-on, and it was way too much talking. We did have a video that we thought would be wonderful, and of course it worked really well, but when the group, group arrived, we couldn't get it to work. So, of course, on those two, two programs that didn't work for us, we always had that one, one thing that we knew that we could pull out of our hat, and that was we could always dance. So we always went back to the dancing, when we, we had a lot of time to spare because that was some that was a party and so that was something fun for us to do. So if it didn't work, we still danced. Um, I 
I have a friend that is in the Hastings Park Library, and she contacted me, and she wanted to start a program like this, but she didn't know really how to get started. But she had a group that um, came into our library on a regular basis, and and so she just pulled out puzzles and, and that kind of thing that seemed to be working with her. And that was just a beginning of starting to build a relationship. And I'm sure that along the way she'll, she'll continue to build on that program. But sometimes you don't have to have a complete program to actually start something with your spe special needs adults. Maybe just pulling out, out um, books that might be interesting, or magazines, or just like a puzzle type thing. Some of the benefits of kind of what we learned from Fun with Friends is... Uh, Wanda, can I just um, interrupt for a second? As we started to leave this, we felt Wanda, like adults... Wanda, can I interrupt for a second? Hi. <laughs> um, yes. The slides... You may. Yeah, that's okay. Um, we're still on, on the slides that I'm seeing here. It's still the one with the Mardi Gras picture. Okay. Is that correct, or is... that's, that's fine. Oh, okay, I didn't know if there was. You don't really have a one. So what I'm still okay. talking about is kind of still on that slide. Not a problem. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, I just was double checking to make okay. sure nothing had frozen up on our end. <laughs> no problem. Go ahead. You know why you have to look at a, to look at a lot of slides that say all the stuff that. So we made it short and sweet. Perfect. No problem. Go ahead. Um. What we learned from our fun with friends is these adults felt more comfortable with, with us in the library. They, we were more approachable when they would come in. Um, so they would, they would, it was easier for them to ask for things, ask for help with uh, computers, um, maybe ask for, for books that they might be looking for. Um, they, they also started to come to other adult programs. And as I, as before you might have heard, Amy was the community outreach and she did adult programming. And during the summer she did a lot of hands-on type programs. And we found that there were a lot of um, caregivers that brought their, their um, adults with special needs to those programs. And that was really, that was just so wonderful. Because we we some of our adult programs were we made like we made hand cream, we made candles, and they were able to do that. Um, so we we also created a relationship with the caregivers, and they also would ask us more questions, and they were they were it was it was easy for them to come with us and say, can I can I bring along my my our child or or something so they can be involved in that program. We had way too much fun at the library with our special needs um, adults. We laughed a lot and we also learned a lot. So it was it was good for us. It was a program we brought to them, but the learning component turned around to Amy and myself. Um, it was probably the favorite program of all times um, that we did every month. Amy, it was of course her very favorite, and she was doing an adult program. Um, you never felt really nervous when you did it. You were just kind of one of the game. It was just very fun. We we became more engaged in the community, um, even though. Even those who didn't necessarily work with adults with special needs or have someone in their family were asking us questions, and they said they appreciated what we were doing. So of course we love to look good. So that's kind of where we were. Here are some of the considerations. Um, we can't tell you what is right or wrong to do because we're not very author we're not authorities on any of this stuff. On any of this on the subject, but these are what we found to be some of the things that we had to consider in doing this program, and and we learned this probably from the very beginning, and we learned this from from talking to organizations and individuals. Um, the ability levels are huge. 
Um, so, so your programs have to um, accommodate all the different levels that you might have in one group. So it's very important that that you don't have any restrictions on what something should look like, or especially in a craft situation, like it doesn't look like this. It just it looks like whatever they want it to look like. So we have a lot of um, we have a lot of different ability levels. You are going to working. You're working with not only organizations but individual patrons that might come into your library. Um, one of the things that we found is that you can't always base your whole program in believing that that organization is going to bring 10 people and they're going to show up and and not really go out and look for um, go out and look for other other um, special needs adults within your library and in and within your community. Um, the organiz um, we're getting an error message on our end. Can you guys still hear Wanda? Uh, yes, we can. No problem. Sometimes that pops up just letting you know you're having some connectivity we're issues. But an error message on our end. Can you still hear us? Yes, we can. Okay. Yep, sounds coming through fine. Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay, let me get on my train of thought here again. Um, of course, privacy is always an issue here. Um, it's very important. Well, in libraries, of course, privacy is always an issue. And you, it should always be kind of right up there at the top. So um, some of the things, as you can see, some of our photos, um, we, we had to go out and get photo releases. Uh, signed by everybody so that their photos could be shown and that was a kind of a really important for us but with the organization it's not quite as easy to get all those signatures so we had to actually work very close with that organization that came into our library to make sure that we did not show somebody on any, any of our pictures or without their permission. Um, we also have, you know, that there's all kinds of different health issues, which brings in some of the things that people may be allergic to, uh, which you, which anymore is like an everyday occurrence, but it's very important that, that we are aware of that. Um, well, one of those, of course, is food restrictions. When Amy started um, um, researching this, I can remember how excited she was because she 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 wanted to do a lot of things that were were food orientated, like nutrition, like like uh, nutrition, or she wanted to do things like apples, and she wanted to have them taste different things. Well, right away, um, the a lot of individuals told us, "Uh, uh can't do that because there's a lot of problems with um, diabetes, with allergies, um, quite a few different food restrictions. So we kind of kind of left out that. We didn't want to we didn't have to want to worry about that issue at all. So we kind of left food out of our programming. Another thing we had to think of um, is well we can only require caregivers to be there. Um, you know, again Amy and I were not set up to really to really understand all the different needs that were required of our participants. So we did require caregivers to come with um, with the with the adults. Although we did have an organization that came in, they did bring two to three caregivers um, to help out, and that was really important because. We did group craft, and uh, we needed that kind of help. But it's really kind of funny because even the individuals that came um, with with their um, with their family member or or the individual patrons, they were always willing to help out with with as many people 
you know, that we have that we need to help with. Um, uh, Wanda? One of the other considerations. Wanda, is, can I? Yeah, we do have actually a question about the caregivers there. Hold on just a second. Um, Michael, you're unmuted. Okay. Yep, am I coming through? Yep. Uh, yeah, one yeah. you, you just kind of touched on that, but my question was, you know, the caregivers that came along, did they, I, and, and the, the answer might be it varied, but did they more participate along with or were they there to help? Uh, you, you just kind of touched upon that. That was kind of my question. Like, did they participate in the events and the, and the programs or just help out? Okay, if you can hear me, this is Amy. Hi, I have my own house right now. Um, the caregivers were very present. They participated. Even when we did that the penguin relay, everyone participated. Um, and they not only helped, you know, if we were doing an, an art project with the adults that they brought with them, but they were willing to be an extra set of hands um, to help with the other adults who may have needed us. Great, thanks. Cool. One thing about the caregivers is they're, they're, they never, we never had to ask them ever to help. They are there to have a good time also. And, and participating was something they wanted to do. So it was never, we never asked for help. They just, just dug right in. They were part of the program. One of the other considerations you have to go with is staff time. So, you know, is this adult program? Is this under youth services? Is it under adult programming? Um, what kind of, there are requirements, you know, there's a lot of time with, um, there's a lot of, lot of staff time required to get the program off the ground. And then you, you can't go in there with one staff member. You, you need, at least need two, and depending on the size of your group, maybe even more than that. So um, that is also an, a consideration. And of course, that, that goes into cost. How much is it going to cost to facilitate that program, and as far as staff time goes. Um, we had such good. Um, caregivers coming and such good presenters. As you can see in the picture in front of you, it's um, Austin again with snakes around the neck. And uh, so it was really pretty easy for us and we hope that you would have that same type of um, program and, and helpers that might come to you also. If you are considering doing a story time format, um, I would definitely suggest contacting Sarah Maria. Um, she has wonderful program plans. Um, but some of the things you might want to think about are when choosing books, um, you may want to choose realistic fiction um, or nonfiction books. Um, oftentimes, those tend to go over better with the group. Um, they're understood better. Um, the adults can relate better to the content, and especially when you're looking at nonfiction, um, it, they can just relate to it better than a story that maybe has a child in it as the main protagonist. That was a really big consideration because when we brought forth um, that literary, literacy component to the organization, they were pretty specific about not having it as a children's book. So also, it's not something that we can. I can tell you that you would never want to read it word for word. I believe that that is too much talking time. So it's something more that it would be more for a visual effect. Okay. Um, the next slide is on sources of information. As you see in the picture, that is with our therapy dogs. Um, why Arts, we, we kind of touched on that a little bit. It's an organization that, that um, brought art into, in, into, um, into Omaha, and they do programs. Um, art is always something that, that I think that would work so well in a program like this. Um, they not only would they get a lot of hands on with clay, with all different kinds of media, 
And so I think I think that um, finding somebody that an artist collaborative or something that has to do with arts is a really great program that you can incorporate into a special needs adult program. Ollie Webb, which is a national organization, um, that's something that that usually that you can find um, if you Google it. There should maybe something in the area in it. There are wealth of information and also funding. They love to fund. They love to give information. And they also do that uh, the book club. Uh, and so they're they're going to be able to give you a wealth of information. Of course, schools. The schools in your area. They're always um, a really good source. Um, I think that more than anything, we found that there are so many organizations that want to help you, and, and they're so excited to see a program. Uh, parents are really excited to be able to bring bring someone to a program like this, an adult with a special need, because you see them in the library all the time. And it's really nice to incorporate them into your organization. Local businesses, are, um, money-wise, they you know they they give small amounts of money for gift cards, that kind of thing. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, find find some local local businesses. All you have to do is incorporate it into your elevator speech about how wonderful your library is. And you will find a lot of sources that want to help out with um, with with a special needs group, disability and awareness and support groups in your in your community are always always aware. Uh, Oxygen Action Partnership is another really good organization that you could contact, and then of course occupational therapists are always welcome to come to your aid. And as I kind of touched on, of course, funding. Funding is always vital. Um, Oliweb, school foundations, local businesses, um, women's clubs or civic organizations, the Nebraska Planning Council on Developmental Disabilities and Grants. That is a Nebraska-specific um, organization. You can find information about them online. Um, but there are similar planning councils and grants available in other states. And in corporations. Um, funding, I think, is kind of vital for this because you have to use your some of your presenters um, require a small stipend. Um, there's a lot of craft involvement with this, so that's very important. Um, and, you, and you'll find that a lot of businesses will also um, give you money for crafts or donate crafts to help you out. Um, so basically, I think that you have to do a lot of groundwork for this program, but but it's really a fulfilling program. I think it brings a a lot to it brought a lot to our library. It's still asked for. Um, they, they, so we have kept a list of email addresses that we can notify anybody as soon as we possibly can. So I think it's a really, it's a, it's a very good program that libraries should definitely invest in. Um, as you can see, here's a butterfly. That's yeah. our butterfly we painted. More than anything else, you know, we can't tell you what's going to work in your community, um, what is what the adults in your area are going to be interested in. Um, but I hope what you can learn from us is just not to be afraid to try, um, to put yourselves out there. Not only will these adults benefit, um, but the entire community as a whole will benefit, and you will learn a lot as well. This was extremely fulfilling, um, like Rhonda said, extremely fun. Um, we loved every minute of this, and I'm so glad that we did it. Um, at this point, you know, we have just a couple of minutes left. If you do have any questions, if there was anything we um, did not go into detail about that you wanted some more detail, um, please let us know. You can also always email us and we can give you more detailed descriptions.
Um, I hope you guys can hear me. I'm so sorry. Oh. Uh, I couldn't talk very much today. Oh, no, not a problem, Amy. You're coming through just fine, I think. I can hear you just no problem. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Amy and Wanda. That that was very cool. Um, lots of great information there. Um, I do have a question and some coming through here on the um, GoToWebinar. So if you guys do have any questions out there, type it into your GoToWebinar interface in the questions section. Uh, or if you have a microphone, just ask me to unmute you and you can ask your question that way. Um, one question we do have that just came through, um, have you ever thought about having a volunteer program with adults with special needs wanting to volunteer? like going to volunteer at the library. Absolutely. We actually ha already have that in place. Um, currently, we were working with the school systems with some of their young adults who were about to age out of the program. They came in regularly to show in the mornings. They primarily showed our um, children's materials. They showed our early readers, um, picture books, board books, things like that. Um, and we did want to expand that program. Again, it was a matter of time. Um, there was, of course, there's always training whenever you have new volunteers. And when you have adults with special needs coming in, um, sometimes, depending on their ability levels, um, you need to follow up more often, or some of them do need a caregiver with them all of the time. Mm -hmm. um, so there were other organizations that we were working with to make this happen. And um, there's some transitioning currently going on with some memorial libraries, so that has been placed in the holds for a little while. Um, but hopefully that's something that can happen in the future. But I do think it's a very viable option, um, and these adults have wonderful skills, um, so I would not hesitate to, to make use of their, their services and their time. They can be so devoted once they come to love you and your organization. They have a lot to do. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I do have a question. You said that you got, um, I know you said about how you got a grant to do this program in the first place. Is this going to be an ongoing program now, or does that grant continue for you, or, or how is that, you know, is this, how is that going to go on? The grant was from the Eastern Library System. Okay. Um, it has ended now. Um, but at this time, like I said, the Memorial Library is going through um, some transitions, new director, and things like right. that. So all of that is a little unclear right now. Okay. Um, but I know, you know, speaking for myself, I unfortunately am not there any longer. Um, but I know that, like we said, Wanda had a fantastic time doing this, and it'll just depend on staff time and resources coming forward. Mm -hmm. I think we will continue to pursue mm -hmm. this. Um, Caregivers have come to us and asked us for the program, and nah. uh, even though there wasn't a lot of, of patrons that that participated, it was more from the organization. I they they have learned about it. You know, we have more people asking about it. And um, like Ron mentioned previously, uh, the other adult programming that we were doing, we tried to include more and more interactive elements. And we saw more and more adults with special needs becoming interested in that programming, in that regular programming. That's right. They started, that, that yeah. I thought was a great That's side right. effect, yeah, of that, that it made them yeah. come to just other things at the library, not the ones specifically uh, um, geared towards them. Going forward, um, the timing of the program um, would also possibly change. We had really scheduled the program time around that organization we were working with. Um, but that also limited the amount of individual patrons who could come to the program. It was a daytime weekday program. It was at 10.30 before their lunch time. And um, so that made it difficult when we required caregivers to be present. That made it difficult for those who had you know, nine to five weekday jobs to come to that program. Mm. So you may want to consider an evening or a weekend program. Again, it just depends on um, your staffing availability and what you can do. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, we do have another question that just came in. Um, oh, and I'm not sure if you did mention this or not now. Um, did you market this program for just adults with special needs or could other patrons or children attend if they were interested? I think because of being grant funded, for a particular purpose, would that have restricted? Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Okay, so it was just specifically for the adults. And like you said, some of the things, the way that you would deal with them would be different than how you want to deal with the children anyway. Yes, and we already had in place in our library a sensory-friendly story time for children mm -hmm. with special needs. So we already had programming for children already in place. We were specifically seeking to serve these adults who had a difficult time, you know, by 25 they age out of the school system, and it's really difficult um, to find other avenues where they can get that same educational and social experience without a high cost level. Mm -hmm. And we did keep all of our programming free, which was very important. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, anybody else have any other questions? We do still have about five minutes left if you do want to ask any other questions. Um, while well, I'm waiting to see if there is anything, um, I will just remind everyone that, yes, the show is being recorded, and the recording will be available later. You'll all be notified when it's ready. Um, Amy or Wanda, I'll, could one of you email me the slides? We can post them as, up as well. I've had some requests to be able to see, you know, get the slides and your information. Um, so that will be included. And any, um, excuse me? I didn't hear that. Can you say that again? Oh, we will send you the Okay, great. Uh, we will send you the Great. And um, for any of the websites that were mentioned, I did look up some of them and found them and included them in our Library Commission's Delicious account, so those links will all be available afterwards as well for anyone. Well, it doesn't look like any last-minute urgent questions have come in, um, but if you guys do have any, you will have uh, Wanda and Amy's uh, contact info is there, is there. I'm sure they'd be willing to answer any questions you might have about wanting to put on one of these programs at your library. Um, Wanda and Amy, any last-minute words of wisdom before we wrap up for today? Thanks for listening to us. All right. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. That was That was great. And I hope we love to talk about it. Yeah, it was a very uh, great program. It's not something I'd heard of before. And I hope you feel better and get your voice back soon, Amy. <laughs> All right, so I am going to take back uh, control of the GoToWebinar here. Do -do -do. There we go. All right, so thank you very much, everyone, for um, attending the show this morning. Um, as I said, it has been recorded and will be available later. I'll let you know when it's open and available. Um, it will be posted here to our Encompass Live website down here right beneath where we have our upcoming programs. We have a link to the archived Encompass Live sessions where we post all of our recordings. So you'll have a link to the video recording of the show on YouTube, uh, the PowerPoint presentation slides that they will be sending to me, and links to the to, um, delicious here's ones that I grabbed already over here um, for them, the YR, it's Ollie Webb, and um, the Nebraska Planning Council on Developmental Disabilities. I'll go through again and see if there's any that I missed, and I will add them as well. Um, so that will wrap it up for today's show. I hope you join us for our um, future shows. We've got our upcoming schedule here. And next week is um, Anatomy of an Ad Campaign is our topic. Um, Heather Imhoff is actually going to be coming to us from Illinois, the DePlanes Public Library in Illinois. And um, they used also a grant funds, a state per capita grant fund, to launch an ad advertising campaign promoting the resources at the library. Um, so she's going to talk about um, what they did there to get um, that information out to their um, current and potential users. Um, also, and if you are on Facebook, please do a like and Encompass Live. We have links to pop you over there. Uh, we do post on Facebook of upcoming shows. Here we get this loaded up. Um, I post a reminder. Here's a reminder from this morning for people to log in for the current day show. When the recordings are available, I post on here. So if you are a big Facebook user, please do go ahead and like us on Facebook. Uh, other than that, let's see here. Um, that will wrap it up for this week's show. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.